Thank you for joining me on this video channel. You're very welcome. Today I'm going to describe to you an antenna which is yes, another backyard antenna, but I'm going to take you right through the whole process of how you can actually erect the antenna, the means of supporting it, the means of feeding it and how you adjust it. And then ultimately, of course, how you can enjoy yourself. Because backyards, small gardens, call them what you like, are a modern thing. Many, many ham radio operators around the world have got this problem. I only got a small garden, I only got a backyard, I want to go on HF. And you want to do it quickly, you want to do it economically, you want to do it, dare I say, cheaply, but you want it to work. So that's what we're going to talk about uh, in a few moments. An antenna that will get you on the air on three different bands in quite a small garden. But before we talk about that antenna, a few items that uh, I think might interest you. Because my radio room is stripped down at the moment, I've been using the Zego G90 a little transceiver. It's 20 watts out, but great fun. As you, as you can see, I've been operating from a, uh, an external battery, so that means to say that um, I'm completely isolated from the mains. But I've been having some great fun with it. It's quite amazing what you could do on 20 watts. It's an education to run low power. And I must admit that the G90 works extremely well. By the way, the G90 will be available in about three weeks' time. So if you're interested in one, give our sales guys a ring or put your name down. We'll be happy to supply. And don't forget, of course, that you get the benefit of UK service backup. Now, regular viewers of this channel will know on a few occasions I've mention a few warnings about antenna modeling because antenna modeling in itself is very good, very powerful programs. They give you some very useful information, but this is a very important but. In the small garden, the small backyard, the performance you get from your antenna will not be what antenna modeling suggests it should be. If you put your antenna in the middle of a big field, it'll work probably very similar to what antenna modeling would suggest. But when you're in the suburban small backyard, small garden, it's a different matter because all the various objects around there, the ground, the houses, the telegraph poles, the everything, trees, they all modify the way that your antenna works in the polar diagram, particularly at low angles. But I came across something very recently which I think really underlines the point that antenna modelling has its limitations. Let me show you what I came across. An antenna manufacturer recently explained why a dual band 2 meter and 70 sems Yagi was not really a good idea, particularly on 70 sems where the performance was quite badly affected by the 2 meter elements. And I put up on the screen here the polar diagram that was prepared to prove this. And this polar diagram was modelled in ESNEC Pro. Now, if you look at it, you can see that indeed the polar diagram doesn't look too good at all. On the right hand side, you've got the main beam and the main beam actually has got three peaks. You've got the what you would expect, the central peak. And then either side, you've got two other peaks, but those peaks either side are almost as strong as the main beam. And then if you look on the left hand side, in other words, the uh, reverse direction, you've got some fairly significant lobes. Yeah, it doesn't look that good at all, does it? Now, our friends in Serbia at Antennas Amplifiers, who manufacture probably the best antennas in Europe and have got their own factory um, and they've got their own test site, they picked up on this and they sent us a sample of a similar antenna which they made. And you can see on the screen now how much cleaner it is. Yes, the lobes are still there, but they're much, much more suppressed, and so are the rear lobes. So you see there are three lobes, but the two side lobes, either side of the main lobe, are really of no consequence at all. They're way down. So which software modeling program is providing the right answer? Well, fortunately, I have a dual band antenna, and it covers two meters and 70 sems, and it is made by antennas amplifiers in Serbia. So I set it up on 70 sems and pointed it at a beacon. And there was no sign 
of the peaks either side of the main beam direction. Neither was there any evidence of any significant rear response at all. In other words, it was very, very close to what I expected and what antennas amplifiers suggested it would be. The program that antennas amplifiers use is 3D magnetic simulation software. On the website they say that ESNIC Pro 4 is not suitable for Yargis because it was designed for wire antennas. So there you are, make up your own mind. So if you want to meddle with your antennas using modeling software, go ahead, enjoy yourself. It probably will be an education. But don't take the answers too literally, particularly if it's a complex antenna or you happen to be operating from a small backyard or small garden. So now we come to the main topic of this video. An antenna that covers three bands all fit into your small backyard or garden. And I wanted to make it as compact as possible. I wanted to make it as easy to adjust as possible. I wanted to make it so that you don't need to haul it up and down to adjust it. You can adjust it on the ground or, or near the ground. And I wanted to make it a sort of a, a dead cert antenna that will operate and it won't cost you much at all. And there's a little bit of construction that you can do if you so wish. You should be able to make this antenna for, well, in the sterling, in uh, UK uh, money, or uh, English money, um, about £20, say $30. You do need a support, of course, but I'll cover the support as well. So let's dive in and uh, have a look at this antenna. Here's our old friend, the end fed half wave, but this time it's an inverted V. Now, the basic antenna is a 20 meter dipole. Now, if for the moment you ignore that coil on the left and go from the top of the coil up to the apex and down to the matching unit, the antenna is a half wave on 20 meters, which means to say it is approximately 10 meters long. Um, in old money, I would measure that as 34 feet. Because it's an inverted V, it will tend to be slightly shorter than a dipole in the air. So if you measure a length of 34 feet, you'll probably find it's a bit too long and be resonant a bit below the band. So that gives you a chance to just trim it onto frequency. Because it's an end fed half wave, we're feeding it at one end via the matching unit on the right. That means to say that it will also resonate on its harmonic on the 10 meter band. So immediately we've got an antenna that covers 20 meters and 10 meters. Now let's go over to the left hand side of the antenna to that coil. That coil is what we call a choke. It stops any energy from 20 meters or 10 meters traveling through it. So it's almost like an insulator. But if we feed the antenna with 40 meter energy, that coil becomes a loading coil and the short length of wire beyond that, approximately two meters, resonates the whole system on the 40 meter band. So now we've got an antenna that covers 10 meters, 20 meters and 40 meters. Now you want to try and avoid the angle, at the apex being anything less than about 90 degrees. In other words, the legs should be around about 45 degrees. It doesn't matter if that angle increases somewhat, that's fine, you may be able to accommodate that in your backyard. But I would say try not to go um, with an apex at a more acute angle than 90 degrees. Now to assist you in planning the antenna to work out how much space you need, etc. and how high it can be, you're really dealing with a triangle. And there is a little program that I'll put a link to that enables you to actually effectively model the length of the antenna in the form of a triangle or an inverted V and see how much space you need. And I'll put a link to that program underneath this video. On the right hand side is the matching transformer known as an un-un, that's unmatched to unmatched, with a ratio of 49 to 1. Now you can buy those off the shelf, we uh, sell those uh, transformers. 
Alternatively, you can make your own. And I prepared a video a couple of weeks ago, and again I'll put a link to that video, showing you how you can actually wind your own transformer. Very, very simple, and it's not really expensive either. So um, uh, take a look at that video. It uh, may save you some money. Going back over to the left-hand side of the drawing, you've got the choke loading coil. This needs to be a value of 34 microhenries. If you go onto the internet, there's plenty of uh, calculators showing you how to wind a coil of this value with the number of turns and the coil former size. I prefer to wind my own using any form that I've got handy and any bits of wire, so I purchased one of these cheap meters which enables you to wind a coil and then measure the microhenries. Also, it enables you to measure capacity as well. I purchased mine on eBay and it cost me around about £40. That would be around about uh, $50, $52 or so. By definition, an inverted V antenna needs to be supported at the centre. In actual fact, it doesn't have to be dead centre, but to keep things symmetrical, near centre is preferable. As we are feeding this antenna at one end, there's no weighty feeder to worry about, so the support centre mast only has to carry a very light weight. I would suggest a telescopic fibreglass mast is ideal for the task. It's well worth spending a little extra and getting a good quality one that will be tough, and we suggest the spider pole. These poles are very easy to work with and telescope out. To support, I suggest that you drive a bit of angle iron into the ground and then place the mast so it nestles in the angle and then just fasten it with whatever means you like. To support the wire, get yourself one of these and then just drop it in the top of the spider pole, which of course is hollow. Leave it free to rotate so when you pass the wire through it, it will automatically turn so the wire passes through it easily at right angles. One final thought on the installation, you might want to consider supporting that loading coal on the left on a short post to take the weight from the fiberglass pole itself. That will reduce the downward load on the pole and make it more stable. Now let's tune this antenna up. First of all, run the wire from the matching unit up to the fiberglass pole and back down again and attach the loading coil. But at this point, don't attach the two meter stub. The beauty of this antenna is all adjustments can be made at ground level. So connect a bit of coax cable back to your transceiver, insert a VSWR meter and aim to adjust the length of that antenna so that it's resonant around about 14.15 megahertz. Now if you switch your transceiver to the 10 meter band and check the VSWR, you should find that you've also got a low VSWR on that band. So as the antenna stands, you've got a dual band antenna for 10 meters and 20 meters. All that now remains is for you to add that wire stub at the end and adjust that so you get resonance in the center of the 40 meter amateur band. Finally, check the 10 and 20 meter bands again, but you should find the resonance has not changed. And there we are. That's your tri-band antenna for your backyard. You should be able to fit it into a garden which is around about 10 metres long. You can bend the ends a bit, it won't matter too much. But uh, it should give you some good fun because the 20 metre and 40 metre bands are certainly quite active these days. 10 metres, it's worth watching that because that opens up from time to time now. And when it opens up, you'll get some real DX on that band. So keep an, keep an ear open for the 10 metre band. What other news have I got? Oh, what I must tell you is that we've just had our third shipment of the Lab 599TX500. That's the 10 watt QRP transceiver. It's been an amazing success. Uh, so we have got those in stock now. Uh, the shipment of the X6100s, uh, that has now left China on its way to us, and that should be with us in around about two, two and a half weeks. So um, keep in touch, and uh, if you're in the market for one of those transceivers, obviously give our sales guys a call and uh, they'll sort it out for you. As usual, thank you for watching this video. I hope it's been helpful, particularly to those with small gardens and probably to beginners as well, because you don't have to have a small garden to put this antenna in. It will work quite happily in the larger garden. But uh, 
what, either way, if you've got a small garden or a big garden, I hope it helps you to get on the air very quickly, very cheaply. And as you saw, all the adjustments can be done at ground level and it just needs the minimum of support. There we are. Thanks for watching once again. Keep in touch, press the subscribe button and uh, until the next time, take care. See you in the next video.